The flow of time is perennial. History is part of time. Culture and tradition flow with history. At intervals of a few centuries, Bharatavarsha has seen flashes of astounding phenomenon of vision and wisdom, guiding people to follow Vedic Dharma. Maharishi Veda Vyasa compiled the Vedas and edited them into four. Centuries rolled before the advent of Adi Shankara, the young saint who conquered the subcontinent by his serenity and scientific logic and re-established the universal philosophy of Advaita. To carry on his mission, he established monastic institutions in different parts of India, including the ones at Badrinath, Dwaraka, Puri, Shringeri and Kanchipuram. Kanchipuram, one of the seven Mokshapuris of Bharat, has been a great centre of learning since time immemorial. Here, Shankara installed a Sri Chakra before the deity Kamakshi. He ascended the Sarvagnya Pita and established a Matam with Kamakoti as the formless Shakti, manifesting as Kamakshi and as Sri Chakra. In the luminous line of Acharyas of this Matam, including Abhinava Shankara, comes the sage of Kanchi, Jagatguru Puja Sri Chandrasekarendra Saraswati Swamigal, the 68th Shankaracharya of the ancient and illustrious Kanchi Kamakoti Peetham. We have only read about great saints world over who carried the message of God, a message of harmony and happiness for all living beings. Blessed are those who have been contemporaries of this sage who radiated divinity in speech, in silence, in his penetrating glance and in his serene smiles. The Acharya expressed profound respect for any religion which believed in the supremacy of God. He believed that every person with any religious pursuit is a divine manifestation. He spoke not only to the learned, but also to the innocent with equal kindness. A multimillionaire and a man in the street made absolutely no difference to him. Their problems ranged from sublime to silly. He asked people to adhere to their respective faiths and avoid wavering and shifting. This was perhaps his credential for being a Jagat Guru. In 1991, His Holiness Dalai Lama the religious leader of the Tibetan Buddhas came to Kanchi and had darshan of the Mahaswami, whom he described as the only monk of the century. Milton Singer of Chicago University wrote that the soul force of India's saints is not a thing of the past, but a living force today. Albert Franklin, the American consul, said that he saw Jesus Christ himself in the Acharya. Syed Hussein Nasser, the Vice Chancellor of Tehran University in Iran said, the light that I have experienced as a Muslim from saints of our faith, I realized at Kanchi. Considered as divinity in human form by millions of devotees, he merged with the infinite on 8th January 1994 at the age of 100. Who was this rare phenomenon? It was in this house in Vidipuram in Tamil Nadu. In a middle class Brahmin family, Swaminathan was born in the year Jaya on the eighth day of Vaikashi month in Anushanakshatra, the English date being 
20th May, 1894. It was Vaishaka Purnima, the day of Lord Buddha's birth. The celebrated Tamil saint poet Tiruvalluvar was also born on Vaikashi Anusham. Swaminathan was the second son of Subramanya Shastrigal and Mahalakshmi Ammal. Their mother tongue was Kannada. Swaminathan's mother was a descendant of the great Govinda Dikshitar, the eminent chief minister of three Nayak rulers of Tanjavur. His son Venkatamakhi was a celebrated musicologist and the author of the 72 Melakarta scheme. Swaminathan's father, Subramanya Shastrigal, had training in Vedas and Carnatic music. He served as government supervisor for education. Swaminathan's only elder brother was Ganapati. Younger brothers were Sambhamurti, Sadashivam and Krishnamurti. His younger sister was Lalita. The father taught Swaminathan music. The mother fed him with shlokas. He showed tremendous grasp and retention. He was often taken by his parents for darshan of the 66th Shankaracharya of Kanchi Kamakoti Peetham. The Swamiji observed some divine vibrations in the boy and predicted that he will be a Mahatma and a Shankaracharya of Kanchi Kamakoti Peetham. At the primary school, Swaminathan's excellence got him double promotion. Swaminathan's maternal elder cousin, Lakshmi Kantan, was receiving training in Rig Veda. Just by listening to him regularly, Swaminathan had the sharpness to learn the verses. Upanayanam was duly performed for him and he received tuition in Sanskrit. A family friend advocate, Venkatraman, was thrilled when he saw the boy's horoscope and the lines on his foot. He predicted that he was going to be a great saint, revered by the whole world. Lakshmi Kantan was a disciple attendant of the Shankaracharya Swami. Swaminathan used to keenly observe his work and puja rituals. With the father's transfers, he joined the second form in Arkat American Mission School at Tindivanam. Here, he stood first in all subjects, including the one for recitation of the Bible. Swaminathan got the first prize acting as Prince Arthur in Shakespeare's King John for his princely demeanor and dialogue delivery. When the 66th Shankaracharya of Kanchi attained Siddhi, 18-year-old Lakshmi Kantan was installed as the 67th Shankaracharya at Kalavai near Kanchipuram. On learning this, Mahalakshmi Ammar with her son Swaminathan left for Kalavai to console her widowed sister whose only son had taken to sannyasa. At Kumarakotam in Kanchipuram, Muniratnam Mudaliyar, a senior staff of the Matam, saw Swaminathan. He asked him to accompany him immediately in a fast-moving cart to Kalavai and arranged another cart for the family.
The boy thought that he was being urgently taken only to attend on his elder cousin. The staff slowly explained to him that his cousin also had attained Siddhi after only eight days of initiation and that Swaminathan himself was going to be installed as the 68th Shankaracharya. The boy was shocked. He did not know what to do except uttering the word Rama Rama. When he stood before the Adhishtanam of the 66th Shankaracharya, Swaminathan felt an inexplicable tranquility descending on him. With telegraphic consent from his father, procedural rituals were gone through. Jalashayam gatva snatva asmadashramat paramahamsashramam pravishami Om Bhuhu Sanyastam Maya Om Bhuvaha Sanyastam Maya Om Subaha Sanyastam Maya He was installed as Pujya Shri Chandrasekhar Indra Saraswati Swamigal, the 68th Shankaracharya of the Kanchi Kamakoti Pitam on 13th February 1907. <laughs> Swaminathan's mother reached Kalavai, followed by the father. Finding their beloved son turned into an ascetic at a tender age of 13, the parents stood stunned. But the charming sannyasi requested them to permit him to assume his new responsibility, which was obviously God's will. They never met him afterwards. Succession to the Kanchi Kamakoti Pitam required adopting sannyasa from Brahmacharya itself. On 9th May 1907, a grand spiritual coronation of the new Acharya was celebrated at Kumbakonam. After Abhisheka with waters from holy rivers, the young Acharya sat on the sacred silver throne and received homage from devotees. Then he worshipped at some temples. The first priority for the Acharya was learning the Vedas, Shastras and various classics from scholars. To avoid distraction by devotees, a secluded village, Mahindra Mangalam, was chosen for his stay for three years. It became a pilgrimage for the great scholar-teachers who were astounded by the extraordinary grasping power of the faint student. Such privileged teachers included learned giants like Mahamahopadhyaya Painganada Ganapati Shastri, Mahamahopadhyaya Venkata Subba Shastri, Varahur Venkatrama Shastri, Mahamahopadhyaya, Karungulam, Krishna Shastri, and such others. With his love for the rich traditions of Tamil language, the Acharya studied its grammar and literature. Additionally, he was learning English, French, and Marathi languages on his own. With his deep interest in arts, particularly music, he enjoyed discussing its nuances. He was good in singing and playing veena. He often went to the small islands in the middle of the river and blissfully contemplated on nature's beauty which were photographed by a disciple under his supervision. His interests included history, epigraphy, archaeology, astronomy and sculpture. He used to visit Gangai Kunda Shorapuram and study the sculptures and inscriptions. 
when he returned to kumbakonam he was fully equipped with knowledge needed for his high position as the head of an ancient spiritual organization he arranged to erect suitable adhisthanams for his guru and parama guru at kalavai where he was initiated into the sanyasa order he streamlined the administration of the matam even at 23 he loved academic discussions with pursuit of knowledge he convened a vidwat sadas and conferred titles on scholars he arranged essay competitions on dharma for students deserving students were given scholarships he also arranged for the publication of the history of the matam in various languages at tanjavur the maratha royal family paid their respects to the acharya and hosted his camp For the Kumbakonam Mahamaham festival corresponding to the Kumbh Mela of North India the Madras Muslim Youth Association sent 200 volunteers to help the gathering of devotees in appreciation of the service the acharya gifted a silver cup to them he got the leading epigraphist T A Gopinath Rao to examine the centuries old copper plate grants relating to the matam and publish the same these are relevant to the history of our country also he firmly believed in the cultural unity of bharat from kanyakumari to kashmir he showed serious concern for the country to become free from foreign rule in 1918 when khadi cloth was propagated under mahatma gandhi ji's swadeshi scheme the acharya himself switched over to khadi for the rest of his life the acharya started his vijaya yatra in 1919 he traveled initially in a simple palanquin later he switched over to pada yatra totally till the end of his life At Patishwaram the acharya asked the revolutionary patriot Subramanya Shiva who was afflicted with leprosy to come close to him and blessed that the country would soon be free For going to Rameshwaram temple he dared to cross the 3 kilometers long rail bridge by foot There was no road bridge at that time He gathered sand from the sea for immersion in river Ganga which he reached 12 years later a tradition rooted in the physical psychic and religious unity of this country Here he gave khadi clothes to all his disciples When national leaders Deshabandhu Chittaranjan Das and S Satyamurthy sought his blessings the acharya said all political parties should ensure that people's piety is not affected though as a sanyasi i cannot identify myself with any party i certainly look forward to the country attaining freedom soon i want not only the foreigners rule to go but also the foreign outlook of our people to go the congress leader purushottam das standen as also tej bahadur sapru received his blessings they marveled his knowledge and concern for public affairs spiritually the acharya was also a freedom fighter fighting for freedom of the people from the cycle of birth and death he felt that by the time political independence was obtained 
uh, people may perhaps further lose their spiritual instincts. When the government of the then Madras presidency brought a bill to regulate Hindu religious endowments and temples, the Acharya guided some eminent advocates to draft a memorandum. The chief minister, Raja of Panagal of Justice Party, thanked the Acharya for his valuable suggestions. The Acharya was a great authority on Vedanta and Mimamsa and could communicate with clarity to the people. He studied world history, particularly the impact of Hindu culture on humanity at large. He studied keenly the Jain relics of Narthamalai and the fresco paintings of Sitan Navasal cave. The Kudumaya Malay inscriptions on music belonging to 7th century was of special interest for him. The Tamil servant Uwe Swaminadayar, who retrieved many classics from decaying palm leaf manuscripts, received the title Dakshinatya Kalanidhi from the Acharya. Veteran scholar Panditamani Kadireshin Chettiyar hailed the Acharya's suggestion for study of both Sanskrit and Tamil for knowing and preserving our great heritage. His Holiness had command over 17 languages, including some foreign languages also. Praising Raja Sir Annamalai Chettiyar for establishing the Annamalai University, he shared his concern about the pernicious dowry system which was impoverishing many families. At a cow shed in Nallicheri, a village in Kerala, a historic meeting of two great persons took place on 15th October 1927. The 57-year-old Mahatma Gandhi was drawn to the 33-year-old sannyasi sitting on the floor clad in a khadi saffron cloth. The Acharya was also happy to meet a respectable national leader leading a simple life with spiritual emphasis he cautioned Gandhiji, Our actions, as far as possible, should not hurt the feelings of large sections of people who believe in tradition. Our dharma advocates equality, but not identity. The Mahatma agreed, but submitted that even to save our dharma, there are some practical compulsions. He marveled at the genius of the Acharya and his concern for the common good. Paul Brunton came to India in search of a fully realized soul. The Acharya told him, Only spiritual understanding between all nations will lead to goodwill, peace and prosperity. There is an indwelling divinity in every man which will bring him back to God. A wiser generation will fuse the best points of Asiatic and European civilizations into a higher and balanced social scheme. Be humble, you will find what you seek. Go to the revered Ramana Maharishi at Trivannamalai. For his Kashi Yatra, his route was through Shri Shailam, Hyderabad, Nagpur, Jabalpur and Allahabad. He covered the entire route of over 2,000 kilometers by foot with the summer heat at 120 degrees. Wherever he went, he had a ritual bath in the nearby sacred river and darshan at the respective temple thereby silently demonstrating the psychic unity of Bharat. The common folk and elite thronged to receive him with honors. The Acharya spoke to the people in their own language. At Allahabad, he was ceremoniously received by a committee led by Vice Chancellor Ganganath Jha. In July 1934, at the Triveni Confluence, he mixed the sand gathered by him at the Setu seashore in 1922. After bathing, he collected water from Ganga for Abhishekam of deities in South Indian temples. He reached Varanasi and received a hearty welcome by the public led by the Maharaja of Kashi and Pandit Madan Mohan Malavya, Vice-Chancellor of Benaras Hindu University. He had darshan of Lord Vishwanatha and Goddess Annapurni. The Gauda Sanyasis of North and Dravita Sanyasis of South offered Bhiksha to him. 
at the Banaras Hindu University, a grand welcome address in Sanskrit was presented by the Vice Chancellor. The Acharya, who replied in Sanskrit, said, The aim of education in ancient India was to attain inner peace. This alone can ensure happiness for society. Education based on our dharma will confer immortality. A conference of eminent scholars of Bengal invited the Acharya to Calcutta. At Kastar Mahade, numerous old sannyasis welcomed the Swamiji with reverence. He was honored with public receptions at Patna and Gaya. The Swamiji addressed the people in Hindi. At Bodh Gaya, the Swamiji offered worship to the Bodhi tree and Lord Buddha. After visiting a few other places, he reached Calcutta, where he received a colorful reception at Howra, jointly organized by several linguistic groups. At a mammoth reception at Kalighat, the welcome address mentioned that Adi Shankara, after establishing the other Peetams, finally reached Kanchi, where he ascended the Sarvagnya Peetam, and that Pujya Shri Chandrasekarendra Saraswati Swami Guru has undertaken the Padayatra all over India, just like Adi Shankara himself. At Puri, at the Jagannath Temple, the ancient Mukti Mantapa Sabha consists of 18 scholars from 18 Shasana villages around Puri. Only those coming in the direct line of disciples of Adi Shankara can adorn the presidential seat. The sage of Kanchi was requested to occupy this seat. Walking through various towns in Orissa, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, he reached Rameshwaram in 1939. With Ganga water collected by him, he did Abhishekam to Ramalinga Swami. His Ganga Yatra was considered complete on that day. The Acharya returned to Kumbakonam after his unprecedented Dharma Yatra for 21 years, covering over 5,000 kilometers. He emphasized that the philosophy of Hindu society is collective well-being and salvation. He initiated a scheme of mass contact. More than 2,000 honorary mudradhikaris were nominated in Tanjavur district alone. Some aims of this scheme were social service by the village community, preserving temples by cleaning them, peaceful persuasive prevention of conversion of Hindus to other religions, cow protection, planting of trees and growing of vegetables, digging of tanks, wells and channels or laying of roads by people themselves without distinction of rich or... He arranged for a new trust to give assistance to the Adishtanam of Bodhendra Swamigal, the 59th Shankaracharya of Kanchi, who stressed the importance of Nama Sankirtanam. To perpetuate Vedic studies, the Veda Dharma Paripalana Sabha was constituted. In 1944, the Golden Jubilee of the Advaita Sabha was celebrated by eminent scholars. In 1946, there was communal frenzy following the unfortunate demand for splitting the country. Hindu women of Bengal were molested and converted and there were indiscriminate killings. The Acharya said, As per our Shastras, those who have been molested and forcibly converted should be allowed to return to our religion and be rehabilitated without any stigma. We should honor those Muslims and Hindus who rendered assistance during these disturbances. 1947 saw the dawn of independence for Bharat. The Acharya's message to the people was, Our flag contains the Dharma Chakra. It links us not only with Emperor Ashoka, but also with Bhagavad Gita, which says, Evam Pravartitam Chakram, that is, our Dharma shines as the Chakra, which symbolizes the constant interaction between the human being and the cosmos. This freedom has been obtained by long struggle and sacrifice. 
Let us pray for a future of peace and prosperity. People should stick to truth at any cost and should completely eschew communal strife. Each one of us should think of the welfare of others. Control of the mind leads to self-realization and that is real independence. When Gandhi ji was assassinated in January 1948, the acharya said that it is a great loss to our value system. Gandhi ji's views on Rama Nama, Varnashrama Dharma, food habits and the definition of god are spiritually profitable even to the most faithful Hindu. The acharya asked the people to pray for his soul. He instructed that 2nd October, Gandhi ji's birthday, should be observed as a day of prayer in temples, mosques and churches. Swami ji was instrumental in the resurgence of the centuries old Tamil devotional hymns Tiruppave and Tiruvempave. He pointed out that a festival named Trippevai Triampevai is held in Thailand. He asked the veteran Tamil scholar TP Meenakshi Sundaram Pillai to go to Java, Cambodia and other Southeast Asian countries to study the evidences of Indian culture in those region. He sent communications to about 4000 legislators to ensure that our legislations should conform to our culture which is our dharma. When the Indian constitution was taking shape, this serene sanyasi convened a conference of mathams from all over India. the first of its kind the concept of religion as a fundamental right saw the light of day stalwarts like pandit jawahar lal nehru sardar vallabhai patel and dr ambedkar appreciated and respected the suggestions of the acharya article 26 underwent an important change also religion was shifted to the concurrent list from the state list in 1954 the acharya nominated as his successor 19 year old subramanian who was trained in the matham itself and was known for his piety exemplary behavior and intelligence he was ceremoniously initiated into the sanyasa ashrama in kanchipuram as pujya shri jayendra saraswati swamigal the 69th shankaracharya of kanchi kamakot peetam to ensure undisturbed training and meditation of the junior acharya he was secluded at the remote village ambi near kanchipuram where there is an adhishthanam of a shankaracharya of kanchi the paramacharya himself conducted the training when acharya vinoba bhave met him the swami ji said any service aiming at purification of one's own self is itself worship in 1957 marked the golden jubilee of the mahaswami's accession to the kanchi kamakoti peetam a biography of the sage in tamil written by sambhamurthi shastrigal was released the royal family of greece including the queen mother her majesty frederica and her royal highness princess irene had darshan of his holiness along with the eminent professor devotee tmp mahadevan when the sanskrit commission sought his advice the acharya suggested that all teachers and candidates for the indian administrative police revenue and foreign service examinations should be given a basic knowledge of sanskrit for national unity the mahaswami blessed renovation of numerous temples he guided the kumbhabhishekam of the akhilandeshwari temple at tiruvanekka ancient spacious matam at tirvanika was renovated a veda patashala is conducted here also he 
pointed out that the Rajarajeshwaram temple at Tirvanika has a Panchamukha Lingam with five faces, just like the one at Kathmandu in Nepal. He explained how the priest at Pashupatinath temple in Nepal is from Karnataka, the panda at Rameshwaram is from Uttar Pradesh, and the priest at Badrinath is from Kerala. The Mahaswami arranged for covering the Vimana of the Kanchi Kamakshi temple with gold. In 1960, the Hindu Religious Endowments Commission under the chairmanship of Sir C. P. Ramaswamy Iyer met him and received his guidance. In 1962, at Elegatangudi in southern Tamil Nadu, the Mahaswami convened the first Vyasa Bharata Agama Shilpa Vidvat Sadas, a unique historical, cultural and academic assembly of scholars and artists from all over India and abroad. The topics included temple architecture, worship and evidences of Hindu culture in various regions of the world. Scholars were honoured. The Acharya said, Our ancient Vedic heritage was prevalent from Egypt in the west to Java in the east. Buddhism did not accept rituals, but with its propagation of Satya and Ahimsa, it is only the Upanishadic aspect of our Vedic religion. We should rediscover our cultural ties with our neighboring countries, including West Asia. Western interests have concocted the race theory, dividing our people into Aryans and Dravidians, for which there is absolutely no sanction in our own sources. We must be fully aware of our solidarity. The Mahaswami's simple speeches to the masses flowed effortlessly, containing the most ancient wisdom and also results of latest research. For him, all religions are but facets of the only eternal Sanatana Dharma. Unity of religions is needed, not uniformity. The core of the Acharya's life was the preservation, study and adherence to the Vedas, which are the common heritage of the entire human race. Ashan Chaturang Mantri Sarth of Thailand spoke about Thai dances along with demonstration. Such academic gatherings in various cities became almost an annual feature under the Mahaswami spiritual scheme. He ensured that a variety of cultural programs, particularly of folk arts, were an integral part of such gatherings to rekindle an awareness about our rich artistic heritage, which only propagated our dharma traditionally at the grassroots level. Teenagers migrating to cities and living beyond their means only increase poverty. Three methods to reduce poverty are wearing cheaper clothes, avoiding luxury, drinking kanji or buttermilk instead of coffee, and avoiding dowry and ostentation in marriages. Value-based quality of living is more important than the so-called standard of living. Rights are only facilities to perform our duties. Teachers should deeply study the subjects to impart and not to sell knowledge. Respect for parents and teachers is essential. Avoid ego, anger and arrogance. Humility with self-confidence will lead to greatness in life. Students should acquire knowledge of world affairs without deviating from education. Truth and non-violence are the cardinal principles of dharma for the entire humanity which is but one family. I'm 
ಮಾತಾನು ಬೇರೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲದು ಅಕ್ಷ ಅಂಬಿಕೆ ನಡೆಯ ಒಂದು ಶರಣತ್ತ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ನಮಸ್ಕ ಗತಿ ತಾಯಾರ ಗತಿ ಕೊಳಂದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೊಳಂದ ಕೊಳಂದೆ ಹಳ್ಳಿ ಎಣ್ಣ ಒಂದು ಸಲ ಕಾಮ ಬರದು ತಾಯಾರಡೆ ಶರಣತ್ತ ಹೋಗಿ ಬಿಡಿಸಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಕೊಳಂದೆ ಹಳ್ಳಿ ಇರ್ಬೋಣ ಅಪ್ಪ ಕಾಮತ್ ಗಳಲ್ಲ ಕಾಮತ್ ಗಳಲ್ಲೇನ ಕೋಪತ್ ಗಳಲ್ಲ ಕೋಪತ್ ಗಳಲ್ಲೇನ ಬಯಸ ಗಳಲ್ಲ His discourses in Tamil have been brought out in seven volumes as Devattin Kural meaning Voice of Divinity. These are known as the Common Man's Veda. Some parts have been brought out in English also. Jaya Jaya Shankara Hara Hara Shankara At Shri Shailam, a Shankara Mantapam was consecrated. Memorial Mantapas for Adi Shankara were constructed in many places all over India including Rameshwaram, Thiruvadai Maradur, Kanyakumari, Kanchipuram, Rishikesh, Badrinath, Bangalore, Vishakapatnam, Prayambaka, Prayag and Kurukshetra. A magnificent Shankara Stupa was erected at Kaladi in Kerala, the birthplace of Adi Shankara. The sage of Kanchi told the members of the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, you should have your units all over India and also guide Hindus living abroad. When the atomic scientist Dr. Raja Ramana met him, he asked him to study Katyayana's Vartika and philosophy of Nagarjuna. At Sri Rangam, the Mahaswami suggested building of a new Gopuram on the old base. This was duly accomplished in the 80s by the initiative of His Holiness J.R. Swamigal of Ahobila Matam. The Mahaswami directed Kanchi Matam to financially help in constructing one of the tiers. This is now the tallest Gopuram in our country. At Tenam Pakam, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi came and sat in meditation in front of him when he was observing silence. When the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.G. Ramachandran had his darshan, smilingly the Acharya told him that his power of attracting the masses should be used in a positive manner. In April 1978, at the age of 84, he suddenly left on an indefinite Padayatra, walking 20 to 25 kilometers per day. He declined any formal paraphernalia of the Matam. A few personal disciples accompanied him on their own initiative. Harijan men, women and children waited on the roadside for his darshan. The Acharya made kind inquiries about their welfare and blessed them. His Pada Yatra included Belgaum, Satara, Tuljapur, Pandrapur, Mahagao and Karnool where he blessed countless common folk who saw him. At 84, he walked like a young man of 25. The rugged terrain, oppressive weather and utter lack of even minimum comforts did not disturb his strict spiritual routine and poise. Roads and rocks were his bed and sky was his roof. His puja was part of his self. At Satara in Maharashtra, a charming boy, Shankaran, had his first darshan of the Mahaswami and received his grace. In later camps, the Acharya put special questions to him and was happy with his response. After one such meeting, the Mahaswami casually remarked that the Matam would soon have three Shankaracharyas. Shamanna, a hotelier with advanced cancer, offered a few lakhs of rupees at the Acharya's feet at Satara to utilize it for some dharmic cause. His Holiness asked him to take the money back and form a trust for building a Uttara Chidambaram Nataraja Mandir in Satara. The Kumbhavishegam was done in 1985 by Sri Jayendra Saraswati Swamigal. Even at the foundation stage, the Paramacharya gave a gracious command to another devotee, Dr. Padma Subramanyam, a dancer and research scholar to design a unique set of 108 Natya Shastra Karana sculptures, each with twin figures of Shiva and Parvati to be fixed around the main shrine. They were sculpted in black granite 
by Muttayastapati. This historic project revives the Rashtriya Marga tradition common to entire Asia after a gap of 500 years fulfilling the efforts of Swami Vidyaranya. Twenty ninth May nineteen eighty three was another historic day for the Kanchi Matam. Charming fourteen year old Shankaran, whom the Mahaswami blessed at Satara, was initiated into the Sannyasa order and designated as Pujya Shri Shankara Vijayendra Saraswati Swamigal, the seventieth Pithadipati of Kanchi Kamakoti Pitam. <laughs> At the earnest request of the two Acharyas, as also the government and people of Tamil Nadu, the Mahaswami returned to Kanchipuram in 1984. The unique trinity at Kanchi Matam, the three Acharyas belonging to three generations, reflected the Mahaswami, ensuring a smooth, unbroken continuity in the 25 centuries old ritualistic, spiritual, social and administrative traditions of the Kanchi Kamakoti Pitam. The Paramacharya himself supervised the initial training of the Bala Swamigal. Visitors during the period included Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, the President of India, Dr. Shankar Dayal Sharma, as well as Their Majesties, the King and Queen of Nepal, and national leaders Atal Bihari Vajpayee, L.K. Adhwani, and Dr. Murali Manohar Joshi visited the Matam and paid their respects to the three Acharyas. A lady came as the widow of an army personnel. The Acharya shocked her by giving her kumkumam prasadam and told her that her husband was alive. Later, the blessed couple came and fell at his feet. As a personification of humility, the Mahaswami said, Many devotees identify divinity with me, though it may not be a fact. But perhaps they derive an inner feeling of communion with divinity due to their own dedicated perception. He was a picture of grace in everything, including his Anushtana and Puja. His message was a simple synthesis of all religions. He came down to the common man to bless him. He weaved together various branches of knowledge into one universal fabric. His insights were remarkable. In the following years, Paramacharya seemed to be further withdrawing towards silence. Some attributed this to his failing health. The crowds of devotees were kept at a distance, perhaps to avoid infection. With the former President of India, R. Venkat Raman, as chairman, to celebrate 1993-94 as the centenary year of the Mahaswami of Kanchi. In 1993, countless devotees satisfied their own desire by performing Kanakabhishegam to the Acharya. But this meant nothing for that great Sthita Pragya, for whom gold and gravel made absolutely no difference. The Mahaswami proved by his life that mukti is not a state after death and that one can become a Jivan Mukta in his own lifetime. In that state, he radiated divine grace in full measure to all who came to him. On 8th January 1994, the Mahaswami looked cheerful. He had a look at the photographs of his parents, perhaps after 87 years. 
he gave leave to the other two acharyas to visit a suburb. The greatest sage of the century, this magnificent moral monarch glided out of his hundred-year-old mortal mansion, out of his own decision and merged with the infinite. There was no sign or indication except the clock by his side, which also stopped at the same moment, 2.58 p.m. An avatar, that is, incarnation of divinity, came to an end. Perhaps humanity may come across another such avatar only after about thousand years. He was a true representative of Indian or rather human culture and religion that is Sanatana Dharma, which aims at the welfare of the entire humanity, Shreyo Bhuya Sakala Janana. The Divine Mother has showed his life as a beacon light to lead our lives in the right path. The mission of reviving and preserving our dharma initiated by Adi Shankara has been continued and consolidated in our own times by the centenarian sage of Kanchi. The sage of Kanchi is beyond the shackles of time. His Adishtanam radiates spiritual bliss to countless devotees without any distinction. The depth of our devotion to him will be the measure of our adherence to dharma, which is perennial like the flow of time. <laughs>